this past year, there have been some controversial rule changes. And the biggest thing, of course, was hands to the face. And although this wasn't a direct rule change in the rule book, this has sparked some debate because, you know, at the beginning of the season, the refs got together, they said, in the you know, scoring committee, the ruling committee, they said, you know, we need to really watch hands of the face, make sure it's not egregious. And really, I didn't think the hands of the face was egregious this year. It were the it was the calls that were egregious because they were just calling all these crazy things out. But what are the what will happen next year? What are two potential rule changes for next year for the upcoming season in 2019 and 2020? There are two. One uh, and they are looking at hands of the face, so that will be uh, hopefully a change. The other things, uh, first of all, is a no headgear rule. So it's a potential that there may not be a mandatory headgear this upcoming season. And this had a lot of debate going on after the Nick Suriano versus Dayton Fix match. And of course, if you remember, Dayton Fix uh, shot in on Suriano in overtime in the national finals. Suriano had his hand on his headgear and it, it looked like he pulled it. You know, I'll leave it up to you guys. The ref said no, it was no pull. John Smith thought it was a pull. Dayton Fix did too. And he got the takedown. Uh, Nick Suriano won the national title. But why should there be headgear or no headgear? Well, you know, the big thing is if there was no headgear there, he there would have been uh, nothing to even worry about. Would he have pulled his hair? Well, then you got a call there. But, you know, why is headgear, headgear mandatory now? Well, one that people may say is like a concussion protocol. And I really don't think there are any wrestlers saying that. Uh, it's more of the governing body of the NCAA who's saying, yeah, they need to wear, like in football, you need to wear helmets for concussions. Well, that makes a little bit more sense. But in wrestling, you know, how much impact is a headgear really absorbing? I don't know. You know, another thing is cauliflower ear, really protecting that. But half the guys that are wrestling have cauliflower ear anyway. So I think this is a pretty good rule change. You know, whether a guy wants to wear a headgear or not, I think it should be up to him. You know, this is a rule change that had been talked about in the past, may change next year. Let me know what you guys think. And also let me got, let me know what you guys think about the rule change of a third party review. So this is this has been going on for a couple of years now because of the scoring system the challenge system you know the coaches throw the brick they can challenge the call that the ref had the refs can also review the call so what what happens normally well in a normal match um let's say john smith doesn't like the call uh that happened against Dayton fix he throws the challenge brick ref goes over stops the match goes over to the side of the match and, and i know some people don't like that challenge anyway because it stops the momentum understandable but Ref goes over to the side of the match, reviews the call himself, comes back out and says, you know, call stands or call is reversed. What people want is a third party review. So the third party review would essentially be sending the the wrestler or the ref would come off the mat. He would, you know, send this call to a third party to a, a box who's essentially he can be in a back room, he can be off site who he then, or she, reviews the call and says whether the call stands or whether it's reversed. So it's not that same ref making that decision. It's up to the discretion of a third party. And this happens a lot in other sports already. It happens in the NFL. It happens in the MLB. It happens in uh, college football. So why isn't this happening in college wrestling? Well, in some cases, it actually is. So in some of the uh, conference championships, there was a third party review on site, and this is in the in the rule book right now. This is up to the discretion of the tournament, which that's kind of strange that it's up to the discretion of the tournament. And like conferences like the SoCon had the third party review, but the national tournament doesn't. I'm not saying that this should be at every single tournament. I think it would get tedious at that point. But when you're in matches in the national championships, and your whole career your whole season lasts on that one call i think that's when you need that third party review let's look at a semifinals match like hayden highly versus jason nolf who that really came down to whether highly got that takedown in the first period and yeah you could say nolf could have came back got the takedown later on you know it would have changed momentum in his head his game plan but you know highly maybe thinking 
this what does this ref know what is he thinking and same with the finals matches you know when you're talking yanni versus mckenna was that a takedown that yanni had in the finals or did he not have it should mckenna have won that well let's leave it up to the discretion of a third party ref the other thing that's nice about this is the ref on the mat i mean he'll still probably get booed but it's less of a boo because he he made the decision on the mat but if he's backed up by another ref, by another third party, well, that makes a little bit more sense. So that's my take on that, and that's what I think.